I'm Stephen Walker. I'm Ashley Walker, and this is Word on the Street. Program. A trip across the water. We're in Northern Ireland to have some fun. We're discovering Northern Ireland's myths and legends. They really do have a haunted room. How scary is that? And we take a look at Northern Ireland's troubled past. Hi and welcome to the programme. Now, me and Stephen are always up for a challenge. So this week we went somewhere we've never been before to try something we've never done before. Well, that does sound like a challenge. For you, being in new situations can be a good test for your English. Don't forget, you can follow each programme on our website. The address is here on the screen. So, where did we go? Northern Ireland. And what did we do? We went surfing. And something to look out for. Listen to the accent of the people in Northern Ireland. How is it different from, say, Stephen and Ashley's accent? Come on, Ash. You said you wanted to see the scenery, and you keep looking at the guidebook. Yeah, it's just really interesting finding out a bit more about all the places along this coast. We're here in Northern Ireland. We both want to try surfing. And the sea you can see over there is the Atlantic Ocean. This scenery is beautiful, but lots of places here also have interesting stories. There are lots of fascinating folk tales and legends. We're here to visit the Giant's Causeway, one of the most famous attractions in Northern Ireland. How far is it, Ash? Oh, um, not far to go now. We should be there soon. Come on. Don't you think that this coastline is just beautiful, Stephen? Look, it says here that the Giant's Causeway is supposed to be a bridge that was built by a giant. You can see why people might say that. Anyway, we're here for the Atlantic waves, for surfing, and I want to get down to the beach as soon as possible. Hi, um, we've got a surfing lesson booked. Um, we don't have any equipment, so we're going to have to hire everything, if that's all right. Don't worry about it. We've got everything you need. Can you swim? Yes, we're both good swimmers, but I'm not keen on going in very cold water. Don't worry about the cold. We'll give you wet so it's going to keep you warm, and we'll get you just the right size board. Great, thank you. Stephen. I wonder if we'll be able to stand after just one lesson. I might be able to, but you won't. Oi. Here comes the instructor, we can ask him. Hi there, Hi. Uh, we're here for our first lesson, um, and I was just wondering, do you think that we'll be able to stand by the end of today? Absolutely, no problem. We're going to start off with the basics of surfing, and you guys are going to have a great time. That's excellent. Shall we get straight in the water then? Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to start off on the beach first of all, guys. First of all, you need to decide which foot you naturally put to the front. That's the foot that goes to the front of the board. Like this? Yes, that's it. Now we need to work out how you lie on the board so that you can balance properly whenever you're paddling. Once you learn how to lie down, then you start learning how to stand up, okay? First of all, you guys need to put your surfboards onto the side. I 
more than half of the ocean. And I'm freezing cold too. I need a hot drink to warm me up. Come on then. I think there's a cafe at the top of this beach. And where'd I put my money? Oh no. Isn't that Stephen? I put my wallet in my wetsuit to keep it safe. Mm. And now my money's soaking wet. We'll be back in Northern Ireland a little later, but first let's go through all of that with our English language expert, Rob, from the British Council. Hello, Rob. Hi, Ashley. The surfing looked fantastic and you learnt so quickly. Oh, it was so much fun. So tell us how you learnt to do it. Well, first we practised on the beach, just learning how to lie down on the surfboard. Just lying down? Yeah, and then the instructor showed us how to stand up on the board. Still on the beach? Yeah, still on the beach. And then, when we had learnt that, we went into the sea and started practising there. Great. Look at the way the instructor explained it to you. First of all, you need to decide which foot you naturally put to the front. Like this? Yes, that's it. Then we need to work out how you lie on the board. Once you learn how to lie down, then you start learning how to stand up. The instructor said, first of all, you work out which foot you put in front. Then, you need to learn where to lie. And once you know that, you do the next thing. I'm interested in those connecting words and expressions. First of all, then, once you've done that. Things we use when we explain how to do something. What sort of things? Anything, like how to make a cake, for example. Mm, well, first you need some eggs and some sugar and some flour. You see, first or first of all. Then you mix them all together. Then or next. And when you've done that, well, you just pop it in the oven. When you've done that, or once you've done that. You don't have to use these words and expressions, but they're very useful. And we use them a lot for that kind of thing. Yeah, I see. So, if you have to explain something in English, or write an explanation of something, these words and expressions give you a structure to help you organise your ideas and to help the listener or reader follow what you're saying. OK. And what about oh, a fine... Finally. I forgot about finally. <laughs> finally comes at the end, of course. Finally, put some candles on the cake and sing happy birthday, like that. And how about one final thing for us? OK. Finally, I want to talk about being keen on something. Watch this. Yes, we're both good swimmers, but I'm not keen on going in very cold water. You said, I'm not keen on going in cold water. If you're keen on something... How do you feel about it? Well, you like it. Yes. So you're not keen on going in really cold water. You don't like it very much. Hmm. Well, actually, it wasn't that cold in the end. We had wetsuits on and everything. I saw. And Stephen used his to catch a fish. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, that's my brother for you. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Rob. We'll be seeing you a bit later. Thanks, Ashley. And now it's time for our weekly quiz, Streetwise. Which of these was built in Northern Ireland? Was it the Eurostar, the Titanic, or the Space Shuttle? Did you get it? Stay watching so you can find out the answer later in the programme. Northern Ireland's a great place for surfing and there's loads of other stuff to do. But for many years it was a place of conflict. During this time, people on different sides were involved in acts of violence against each other, but now it's peaceful. Amon Deep has been finding out how Northern Ireland has been moving on. Belfast is a lively and exciting city known for its music, nightlife and university. But it was once famous for something which made headlines around the world. Years of conflict known as the Troubles left thousands dead. One community, who are mostly Protestant Christians, 
wanted Northern Ireland to remain part of the United Kingdom. The other community, who are mostly Catholic Christians, wanted it to join up with the Irish Republic. People on the extremes on both sides used violence. Fortunately, those days are over. But these murals are a reminder of the past. They can be found all over Belfast, painted on walls and houses. The art showed support for one side or the other and symbolized a divided community. But now many murals are being preserved as an important part of the city's history. I've come to meet Tim McCarthy. Hi there, Tim. Hello. Thanks Hi. so much for meeting me. He has studied these murals and what they can tell us about the history of conflict here. Tim, can you tell me about images like this? Images like this are very common in working class areas in Northern Ireland. And what does it tell us about the history of the area? Well, this particular community would have felt as if they were under um, pressure from the other community and therefore it contains a lot of defensive, militaristic kind of imagery. And what about images from the other community? You will find similar imagery, but the symbolism is very slightly different, a different use of colour, but the content would be very similar. And what is Belfast City like now? Belfast is very different in the last few years. We've had a lot of investment, everyone feels better, feels more relaxed, and a lot of the murals that are going up actually reflect this. New murals are appearing in the city. Many people feel these new images are more appropriate for a community which wants to leave the violent past behind. People have been working hard to achieve a lasting peace in Northern Ireland. Many projects try to bring both sides closer together. Here at the Conway Community Centre, Tim is helping young people develop their skills and produce new artwork. In Northern Ireland, it's very important so, to be an art scene because instead of violence, instead of expressing yourself through ways and means of alcohol or drugs, you can turn to the art scene. It's safe and it's a good form of expression. I think street art is important for any city because it gives the city a kind of character. You know, without art in a country or whatever, it would be very dull. Tim gave me a lesson in his style of street art. <laughs> Tim, how significant is the street art scene in Belfast today? Well, it is quite small, but it's growing all the time uh, with the help of the internet. Obviously, people can see what's happening globally and they want a little piece of that on their doorstep. There is a saying that art reflects society. People here are glad that the new art murals reflect a more prosperous and peaceful Northern Ireland. If you'd like more help with the language you heard there, you can go to our website. The address is on the screen. This is Word on the Street. Still to come in the programme. Haunted Houses. We're on Northern Ireland's Ghost Trail. Rawr! And have you worked it out yet? Stay watching to find out the answer to Streetwise. Well, as we've been hearing, Northern Ireland has had a troubled past. Sometimes it's hard to understand the reason for the conflict. In this week's Seat on the Street, we ask our expert to explain how it all began. Welcome to Seat on the Street. Hello. Please identify yourself. My name is Joe Lynham. I'm a BBC correspondent. I was born in the Republic of Ireland, but a lot of my family live in Northern Ireland. Why has there been conflict in Northern Ireland? Britain and Ireland are good friends and close neighbours right now, but it wasn't always the case. Many hundreds of years ago, Britain invaded Ireland and took over all of its land. Britain gave much of that land to settlers from England and Scotland who were Protestant Christian. The land belonged to Catholic Christian people and that sowed the seeds for a sectarian or religious divide which still exists today. 
What are the Troubles? Well, the Troubles are a recent example of that sectarian or religious divide. In 1921, Northern Ireland broke away from the rest of Ireland, and that left a Protestant majority ruling, some say unfairly, a Catholic minority. And that led to resentment and the creation of illegal paramilitary groups, and they carried out some awful violent acts on each other. What did the Troubles mean to people living there? Well, fear and threats were a serious problem in Northern Ireland. Thousands of people were killed on both sides by bombs or shootings. Many more were injured and were forced to leave their homes. And extreme nationalist groups even attacked mainland Britain. What is the situation like now? Well, things are much better since the Good Friday Agreement was signed in 1998 between both sides. It allows for peaceful and political discussion without the threat of bombs or bullets. What is daily life like now? Well, there are areas in Northern Ireland where there is still a threat of violence, especially where Catholics and Protestants live close by. But for the majority of people in Northern Ireland, life is peaceful, just like the rest of the United Kingdom. Thank you for taking part in Seat on the Street. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. OK, let's go back to Northern Ireland and see how we got on. And something to look out for. Stephen and Ashley arrive at their hotel. What's special about the hotel? Right, we can have a couple of hours here before we have to head off to our hotel. We're here in Northern Ireland to learn how to surf. And Ashley's insisting we also take time to see the sights. We are at Dunluce Castle. It's famous because it's supposed to have its own ghosts. Ooh, come on, let's go see if we can find a ghost. Ooh. Stephen, look, it says here that part of the castle fell into the sea during a terrible storm. All the cooks drowned, except for a young kitchen boy who survived. Oh, scary story. But what an interesting place. Hmm. Here, give me that book. What's the name of our hotel? Um, it's the Ballygally Castle Hotel. Ballygally Castle Hotel. Oh, Ballygally Castle is said to be one of the most haunted places in the area. <gasps> Come on, Stephen. <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs> for two rooms. The name is Walker. Oh, yes. How are you enjoying Northern Ireland? Oh, it's great. Um, we've been surfing today and we went to a haunted castle, Dunluce. Mm -hmm. We didn't see any ghosts, though. Did you know we have ghosts here in the hotel? <gasps> really? Yes. We even have a ghost room that you can visit. The man who built the castle here trapped his wife in one of the rooms and she escaped by jumping out the window. <gasps> People who visit the hotel say they hear strange noises and things move by themselves. A ghost room? How do we get there? Down the corridor, turn left and up the spiral staircase. I thought the receptionist was joking when she said the hotel had a ghost, but they really do have a haunted room. How scary is that? Oh, Stephen, you'll believe anything. But I do want to see this ghost room. Let's have a look. I'm not sure about this, Ash. Come on, you big baby. Mm, I don't like the look of this. Look, it's just an ordinary room. It's a bit gloomy and well, the best hard. But I would be happy to spend the night in here. Well, I wouldn't. It's cold and it's creepy. Anyway, I'm going to my room to change before we eat. <laughs> Come on, Stephen. We don't want to be late for dinner. Oh, Ash, you're so sensible sometimes. Oi, wait for me. I am ready for bed. 
all that surfing, I'm exhausted. I'm going to sleep well tonight. Me too. But I found all the ghost stories a bit scary. I feel a bit nervous about spending the night in this haunted hotel. Don't you? All these ghost stories are absolute nonsense. I don't believe in ghosts. How could you possibly believe that rubbish? Now go to bed. Ashley, actually your room isn't that way. What? I had your room changed. You in the ghost room. I had all your stuff sent up there. What? Well, you said all these stories were nonsense. You said you didn't believe in ghosts. Go on, Ash. Spend a night in the ghost room. You're not scared, are you? No. I'll sleep like a log. Good night. Good night. Don't get scared. All this talk of ghosts has got me thinking this hotel is haunted. I'm as bad as Stephen. I hope he's okay. Hi, Rob. Hi. You weren't scared, were you, Stephen? What? Scared? Me? No. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. Ashley said she wasn't afraid of ghosts either. Look. All these ghost stories are absolute nonsense. I don't believe in ghosts. OK, so Ashley said... I don't believe in ghosts. Now, listen to what you said a little bit later. You said all these stories were nonsense. You said you didn't believe in ghosts. So, Ashley's words were, I don't believe in ghosts. But your words were, you said you didn't believe in ghosts. So it changed from don't to didn't. That's right. This is an example of what's called reported speech. Look at another example. Did you know we have ghosts here in the hotel? <gasps> then look at what you said. I thought the receptionist was joking when she said the hotel had a ghost. Had a ghost. Right. It's the same as before. What people actually say is direct speech, like this. The film starts at five o'clock. That's direct speech. Reported speech passes on the same information. He said the film started at five o'clock. The verb, starts, changes tense from present to past. Started. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Look at another one. You can take a bus or a train. That's the direct speech. What would be the reported speech? She said I could take a bus or a train. That's right. The present can changes to the past. Could. OK, I think I got that. Present changes to past. Well, actually, Stephen, it's a bit more complicated than that. But I just want people to start looking and listening for reported speech and notice how things change when you report what other people have said. But now for something a bit different. Watch this. But I found all the ghost stories a bit scary. I feel a bit nervous about spending the night in this haunted hotel. It's a bit gloomy and the bed's hard, but I would be happy to spend the night in here. So if you feel a bit nervous, how do you feel? Very nervous? No, not very nervous. A bit nervous. A little bit. OK. A bit is a little bit. The castle was a bit scary and a bit gloomy. And we've learned a bit about reported speech today. Just a bit. OK. Thanks, Rob. See you next time. Now we've just got time to find out the answer to this week's Streetwise. Which of these was built in Northern Ireland? Was it the Eurostar, the Titanic or the Space Shuttle? And the answer is the Titanic, famous for hitting an iceberg. I hope you got that. If not, better luck next time. Well, that's about it from us. Well, today, first of all, we looked at explaining things and the words and expressions we use to do that. 
first of all, then, after that, finally. These expressions help you explain the order of things, and they're very useful if you have to write in English. After that, we looked at keen on. I'm keen on swimming, so I like swimming. I'm not keen on fishing. I don't like fishing. Then we looked at reported speech. Reported speech is when we tell someone what another person said. So, for example, Ashley said, I don't believe in ghosts. In reported speech, that becomes, she said she didn't believe in ghosts. The tense changes. Don't believe, change to didn't believe. And finally, we talked about a bit. It's a bit cold. I'm a bit nervous. Not very nervous, just a bit. Don't forget to visit our website for more help with your English. Thanks, Rob. So, from Steve and Rob and me, goodbye. Bye. Bye. In an Ashley's accent. Come on, Ash. You said you wanted to see the scenery, and you keep looking at the guidebook. Hmm? Yeah, it's just really interesting finding out a bit more about all the places along this coast. We're here in Northern Ireland. We both want to try surfing, and the sea you can see over there is the Atlantic Ocean. This scenery is beautiful, but lots of places here also have interesting stories. There are lots of fascinating folk tales and legends. We're here to visit the Giant's Causeway, one of the most famous attractions in Northern Ireland. How far is it, Ash? Oh, um, not far to go now. We should be there soon. Come on. Don't you think that this coastline is just beautiful, Stephen? Look, it says here that the Giant's Causeway is supposed to be a bridge that was built by a giant. You can see why people might say that. Anyway, we're here for the Atlantic waves, for surfing, and I want to get down to the beach as soon as possible. Hi, um, we've got a surfing lesson booked. Um, we don't have any equipment, so we're going to have to hire everything, if that's all right. Don't worry about it. We've got everything you need. Can you swim? Yes, we're both good swimmers, but I'm not keen on going in very cold water. Don't worry about the cold. We'll give you wet so it's going to keep you warm, and we'll get you just the right size board. Great, thank you. Stephen, I wonder if we'll be able to stand after just one lesson. I might be able to, but you won't. Oi. Here comes the instructor, we can ask him. Hi there, Hi. Uh, we're here for our first lesson, um, and I was just wondering... Do you... I'm Stephen Walker. I'm Ashley Walker, and this is Word on the Street. Program. A trip across the water. We're in Northern Ireland to have some fun. We're discovering Northern Ireland's myths and legends. They really do have a haunted room. How scary is that? And we take a look at Northern Ireland's troubled past. Hi and welcome to the programme. Now, me and Stephen are always up for a challenge. So this week we went somewhere we've never been before to try something we've never done before. Well, that does sound like a challenge. For you, being in new situations can be a good test for your English. Don't forget, you can follow each programme on our website. The address is here on the screen. So, where did we go? Northern Ireland. And what did we do? We went surfing. And something to look out for. Listen to the accent of the people in Northern Ireland. How is it different from, say, Stephen?